So the next person I'm going to get to come up is uh, Francesco Panzeri uh, from Demetra. Um, he's going to give us a, a talk on uh, Demetra basically specialise in biogas and they have quite a lot of extensive experience in the parent company in Italy and they're developing some small scale plant in Ireland which is quite interesting. Thank you so much. Good afternoon. It's been a very long day, I guess. So, um, I would start introducing who is Dimitra. Dimitra is, is a company that's been set up here in Ireland in 2013, but we do have Italian roots. And uh, probably most of you know that in, in 2012, actually from 2008 up to 2012, in Italy, there was a very generous incentive for anaerobic digestion and electricity from an uh, from anaerobic digester. So we got that. Uh, we, we took from there and we moved to Ireland when, in 2012, basically, uh, the the, uh, the the incentives was uh, shut down basically over overnight. And we we implanted over uh, 36 plants in Italy uh, over 15 years, and. Uh, we we uh, we operate 30 megawatts basically, and uh, it's 10% uh, of our income goes into research and development because we think that although the technology is quite well known, uh, there's a lot that can be done to improve anaerobic digestion. Um, uh, we we heard what you said, Russell. It's uh, <laughs> it's uh, every single project is slightly different, and for us, it's uh, it's a big problem. So this is what an anaerobic digestion looks like. There's a, a couple of tanks made by concrete, and uh, there's a biodegradable matter going in, and bacteria basically uh, go through a process, and the two outcomes are biogas and uh, digestate. That works pretty well as a fertilizer. This is in, uh, in a very short way. And obviously, it can eat, it can use a lot of uh, biodegradable matters coming from you know, uh, slurries, uh, down to um, any kind of waste from a uh, food processor, basically. So we, we started and we developed a, a good market in Italy. We, we built big, uh, big plants. We were the first company building uh, an anaerobic digester based on uh, uh, the organic fraction of municipality uh, solid waste. Uh, but then in 2010, something interesting happened. So one of our clients came into the office saying, well, we, we have secured a very good stream of waste and we have a piece of land and uh, we think that it's the perfect spot where to develop a, a, an anaerobic digester. We think that we are in the region of one megawatt. Uh, the only problem is that that piece of land is within a national park. And uh, although national park authorities cannot say, no, you can't develop uh, the anaerobic digester, they actually dictated uh, the rules, and the rules were uh, no concrete, uh, no removal of any soil, not even a small pebbles, otherwise you will be uh, appointed as a quarry. Um, has to have a technology that could be easy decommissioning, and has to blend into the environment as much as possible. And obviously our client said, oh, those are very interesting things, but no extra costs. So we gave a little bit of thoughts about that, and we came up with this idea of building the tanks uh, with the soil, basically digging part of the tank in the soil and using the same soil to build up the, the shoulders, and then obviously lining these shoulders uh, and then the tank with the same material with which you uh, line the landfills. And obviously not having hard shoulders, uh, well, that provides a little bit of a problem in mixing and then we came up with a, a different idea, and this is actually the first facility, the one built in the, uh, in the National Park. We came up with a different idea in mixing. So there's a pumping station, uh, a big one, that basically sucks from the bottom of these uh, huge bowls, the sludge, and then heat up the sludge and pump it back on top. So there's a recirculation system. It's completely different from the traditional way that provides a mixing with propellers or agitators. Um, this could actually turn out to be very interesting. It's very efficient and uh, has a very low parasitic loads. Um, and the idea was so successful that we actually built four more facilities of this kind. And here, just to show you that parasitic loads uh, 
are in the region of 7% compared to 15% of the standard uh, uh, structures. Now, after we built those uh, facilities, uh, we actually realized that to go further, we should have done something completely different. I mean, so far, every single project we've, we've been involved in, uh, well, we approach those projects uh, in, a, in a project way. So every single case is different. But if you want to go to the market, I mean, you have to develop a, a product. So kind of standardize. Also, um, there's, a, there's another thing that happened at the same time. We were involved, uh, uh, although in a tangential way, um, uh, with the with a project called Biogas 3 and during the final presentation uh, one of the participants uh, pointed out that the amount of potential feedstock and uh, for anaerobic digester in Europe it's way way more uh, than the actual number of uh, anaerobic digesters facilities that are built in in Europe and even in in Germany you know one of the actually the leading country for the technology in Europe um, so, where is it actually that feedstock? And it's kind of trapped in smaller projects, smaller stream of uh, waste. So that actually added on top of what we said. Uh, the idea that we, if we have to go in the direction of a product, has to be for uh, the exploitation of this kind of uh, stream. And here is it's a very rudimental way to explain that. So. Uh, the blue line is actually the cost per uh, kilowatt of a facility, and uh, so, and and the, the the orange one is roughly uh, the the income from uh, um, an incentive at 21 uh, cents per kilowatt. So very generous, pretty much like the one we had in Italy back in the days. And it's, as you can see, it's really hard to 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 uh, uh, survive if you go in the direction of, of small uh, units, uh, units between 50 and 100 kilowatts, uh, really struggle to uh, the, the project really struggle to survive. Uh, so the idea was to have a solution that would meet basically uh, uh, solve that problem. And again, even if you, even worse, if you think uh, uh, a situation where incentives are, well, there are no incentives, and so you have to rely only on the fact that you are actually providing to somebody his own electricity, uh, then again, it's even worse, of course. Um, so we came up with the idea to create a sort of product, and we harvest what we had as an experience uh, uh, coming obviously from the solution built in soil. And we thought, okay, this new product has to be easy and quick to be installed, uh, very modular, uh, easy to be expanded, and has to handle a, quite a wider uh, range of feedstock. Obviously, it has to be environmentally friendly and, and, and should have a low impact on the, on the landscape. Uh, the best would be to have it tested even before shipping and uh, should have very low maintenance and of course should be 30% less expensive than the standard solution made by concrete. So we came up with this idea. Uh, instead of having tanks made by concrete, we have tanks made in basically some uh, are bags, bags made by a plasticized fabric, okay, of the kind that basically is used to transport uh, fuel or uh, by helicopter. Okay? And uh, the recirculation system uh, that provides uh, the moving of the sludge is the same that we have applied to the big uh, uh, facilities uh, made by soil. And uh, obviously, this is the shape that's action. Uh, there's a ring that distributes the sludge uh, and it actually pumps it back into the bag. And it works exactly as uh, the, the, the previous solution I explained to you. So there's a, there's a sinkhole at the bottom, it sucks the sludge back into. Um, the, uh, the container. In the container you have a pumping station, heating exchanger, and then the sludge is pumped back on top and around the bag. So that was a, a very simple idea and this is actually how it might be deployed. And uh, so we, we started to uh, structure a project to understand if it's, this idea was actually feasible. So. Uh, through Enterprise Island, uh, we had uh, uh, the funds to 
to do a, a computational fluid analysis on the base of our idea, just to understand how much we could achieve in moving the sludge within the bag. And it turned out that it works. And then the second step was to apply for a, a research development and deployment program from SCI. And we had a unit, a small one in scale, uh, it's actually still working, um, placed in Tipperary in a, on the site of a, <clears throat> of, a, of a dairy farm. As you can see, it's a, it's a bag. Uh, you can see from the picture down there, it's flexible. Uh, but it works perfectly as a reactor tank. Um, the heat is actually provided uh, within the container. Um, there's a pumping station in the container. There's a, just one single pump. It's a grinding pump. So every time the sludge goes in, it's actually grinded, which is actually good. So uh, provides a much better mixing. And there's a sprinkler on top, which actually keeps at, at bay any foam or any crust creating on top, and uh, it's very simple. And uh, so the idea is obviously, it's, it's not idea, it's, uh, it's what's actually happening. So we will uh, put on market uh, this kind of solution uh, with the container and the bags, and it comes, the bags comes in three different sizes. So again, we are oriented in the direction of uh, a, a product, and the product will handle uh, different uh, volumes of sludge and of course can be combined so one single pumping station can deal with more than one bag up to three uh, so basically providing the mixing in into three three different bags which actually provides a huge uh, flexibility let's say that there's a um, dairy farm uh, which has a, a number of heads in this earth and over the next 10 years they want to double the number of cows they have of course I mean uh, this will help them to address this issue and uh, uh, the, the sludge produced by this double number of, uh, of cows will you know will be factored into the same facility also this is actually something that in the future, if you decided to move it or change it, you can simply uh, uh, fold the bag. Okay, obviously, um, empty the bag, fold the bag. <laughs> Better <laughs> empty the bag before. And fold the bag and, and uh, put into the container, and that's it. So it's a very flexible solution. The good thing we have discovered actually running the, the test uh, is that we can actually handle up to the 12% in dry matter which means that uh, the, the range of uh, feedstock that we can handle is quite wide. Uh, it goes obviously from cow slurry uh, and, and pig slurry uh, down to you know, uh, grease traps, um, vegetable uh, mashes from distilleries, um, even you know, slaughterhouses, um, of course. So um, it's, it's obviously very handy and very flexible. So this is a this is a, the last uh, um, this is the last uh, um, image. It's actually a, a very simple uh, uh, schedule that shows on the base of different um, feedstock the potentials in production of biogas that we have calculated. So it's very simple and uh, uh, well, you can find it on on our website as well. This is it. Thank you so much.